Hi everyone, in this video we're going to look at the halogenation reaction of an alkene. As the name implies here, we're going to halogenate the alkene and place two halogens from my reagent on each carbon of that double bond. So this produces what is called a vicinal dihalide. Vicinal describes the one-two relationship of two groups. In other words, they're next door to each other. And dihalide, there are two halides. This reaction can be carried out with bromine, as shown, or chlorine, Cl2. Iodine, I2, is not reactive enough for this reaction, and F2, fluorine, is too reactive for this to be practical. A solvent is necessary to bring these um, reagents together in the same phase. So typical solvents are classified as polar aprotic, where there's not a, an acidic hydrogen. Typical solvents for this type of reaction are dichloromethane, which you might see um, abbreviated as DCM, or chloroform, CHCl3. Let's take a look at a few examples to understand the regio and stereochemical outcomes. Let's use this first example involving one pentene to look at the regioselectivity of this reaction. As we saw previously, we will add one bromine to each carbon of the alkene. Since both carbons are forming new bonds to bromine, there is no regioselectivity to consider here. Let's look at the stereochemistry of the products that we produced. Here, there is one chiral center generated when we added the two bromines across the alkene in one pentene. These two compounds are enantiomers. One has S configuration, the other has R configuration. We see experimentally that these two enantiomers are produced in equal amounts. When we have a mixture that is equal parts of two enantiomers, it is known as racemic. A reaction is stereoselective if one or more stereoisomers are produced in excess of the others. In this example, the two possible stereoisomers are produced in equal amounts. So this reaction is not stereoselective. Let's carry out the halogenation reaction on two pentene and see how that compares to that of one pentene. We're going to add bromine to each carbon of the alkene in the same way that we did above. The difference now is that we've generated two chiral centers. How many stereoisomers are possible for a compound that has two chiral centers? A compound having two chiral centers would have up to four stereoisomers in that family. We can do the calculation of two to the n, where n is the number of chiral centers, two to the two is equal to four possible stereoisomers. This reaction, though, produces just two of four. So it is stereoselective when there are two chiral centers produced. This reaction is described as an anti-addition because the two groups have added to opposite faces of the alkene. The one has added to the front face and the other has added to the back face, and that can happen two different ways. If we change the configuration of our alkene from an E-alkene to a Z-alkene, we can actually change the stereoisomers that are produced. We still get an anti-addition where one bromine adds to the front and the other adds to the back, the two different ways, and we can rotate about these single bonds to show that these are in fact different from the products obtained with the E alkene. So let's show um, the backbone is the same, and we produce diastereomers to the products that were produced using the E alkene. So overall, it is still an anti-addition. The trans alkene gives two stereoisomers, the cis alkene gives two different stereoisomers, this reaction can then be described as stereospecific, where stereoisomeric reactants lead to stereoisomeric products. In a later video, we'll study the mechanism of the halogenation reaction to understand why this reaction is stereoselective. Thanks for watching.